Story Man of the Sandbox set, the wonderful wizard of all wee wee folk. That's you. Here's our own Uncle Al. One, two, three, one, two, three, the Al Watson TV show. <gasps> What? Is there going to be a TV show, Al? There might be. Oh, Uncle Al had a lot of medicine last night. <laughs> <laughs> he feels terrible today. High energy, high energy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start again. OK, yeah, please. Big news with the shed then, Al. Morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, so we've got we've got a little cheeky day filming today, and we do have some big news. But I think don't let me just come out with it doing this. Let's just get on with what we've got to do and let it come out like organically. Organically. Yeah, I but... don't want to just kind of sit here and do this thing. Actually, I, I hate it when we're doing the films and it's just me waffling on about shit. Right, we've got a pewter cup that needs a dink knocking out of it. But in order to do that, we're going to have to polish up that steak anvil. The, the other other steak anvil we're going to polish up and we've got a set of skull coasters to make for one of our one of our followers Phil. So we've got those to make and we've got those to personalize. But I would like to use the little steak anvil to do that and we're going to polish it all up. The reason being is we're going to try and go for a better finish. We've got to reline the forge. So we've got to do that before we do anything. Um, I've increased the diameter of the gas inlet on the forge so hopefully we can run it at a lower pressure we'll see what that does it might have been a huge mistake so i think let's just get into it and that'll come out at a later kind of later point in the film but it's about tv it's very um, exciting isn't it it's really exciting actually i mean yeah i've been very very well i'm now suddenly feeling a bit more confident about it because this has been going on for it's actually been going on for kind of a couple of months in terms of we we heard there was a possibility but I'm one of those people that doesn't like to get too excited about things until they're happening. And so first visit up to the studios was a week ago, and obviously that was completely new. Um, and then second visit was uh, literally, yet. well, I came back yesterday. And you know what? We're smashing it. I mean, we are smashing it. <laughs> when I you just... say we, though, it's really... Well, it is me, but it's come through the dirty shed. And I mean, the reason being is we're a collaboration of a filmmaker and a maker. And but the problem is, is that they just they want, you know, they want a maker. So it's not as if, you know, it's just difficult, isn't it? Future TV star. You know, if you know, once it's aired and I mean, let's face it, they're filming at the moment. So that's a long way off. We kind of think our best estimate is Easter or maybe even Christmas if they really pull their, you know, really pull it out of the bag. I'm going to bet on January, January yeah. 9th, January 9th, why the 2021. Big, is it a big day in TV, is it? I think well, we it just is released. Be when this yeah. Shit hits it. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, um, once it's actually been aired then we'll we'll show you all the stuff behind the scenes that we did. Yeah. So you're going to get the full story, but unfortunately you're just going to have to wait. But we can talk about it in terms of Vaguely. how you feel about it. I can talk about feelings. I can't talk about specific things. Feelings. feelings. <laughs> uh, I can't talk about specific stuff. Um, and we can't give you the name or any other detail. But yeah. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Get on and do some work then. Okay, Holmes. Is... Uh, right, so first things first, let's get this forge realigned, eh? Come on, hey, hey, come on. Let's get this forge relined. I need your help. Have you got any money? Have you got a burger? Come on. Uh, so yeah, so basically I went to the Vic, 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 Victas, Victas website. So this stuff is like 50 quid a meter on there, but the same company is selling it on Amazon at like 20 quid. How does that work? That's bad. It's great for us because we got it at 20 quid and not 50. So what we've got here is inch blanket and I think this is rated up to just over 1200 degrees. So we don't think our forge, we don't need to be going higher than that to forge metal uh, or to forge steel. Um, and I think actually it means we can do some other interesting things. So what's this? Mm -hmm. Bin. What we need to do, so I kind of need a little strippy strip strip at about 25 centimetres. Okay, uh, gently pull this out and just open that up. We said 25, didn't we? Ooh, that's a whole new angle. Are you redefining filmmaking, Mark? 
<laughs> before breakfast. <laughs> oh, oh, my teeth are on edge. Oh, God, honestly, it's really getting me that. I think that's a bit big, don't you? So what I need to do is try and open it up, but I think already you can just tell that that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna quite work. So we're gonna remake the forge, but just at this point, we need something running. I'm just putting this in the back. So we're just packing that out, trying to kind of, we don't want anywhere where the heat's going to work its way through, because obviously that would be bad, because we're trying to insulate, if anything, aren't we? So when it's first heated, will it shrink back? Uh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't really, it'll just stay pretty much unchanged. Does it go hard? No, it could do, because, but we're not using the stuff to make it go hard, we're just using the blanket. You're meant to line this to stop the fibres coming off it, but we're, like I say, we're just, this is just rough and, oh, rough and ready. Um, so what we're doing is we're just doing it so that we can keep forging in the short term. So we're just going to test, uh, we're just going to test the flame. So basically, yeah, so we can take that. So I'm now messing up, I think I might have bugged this up actually. So I increase the jet size on this. So once we start kind of increasing that um, pressure, so see we get an orange. Yeah. So I think that means it's oxidizing. So we need that nice clean blue flame. Alright, How did the TV thing come about, Mr. Watson? Well, I think somebody saw the channel, actually, and then got in touch and asked, would we be interested? And of course we were. It's like anything, innit? It's an opportunity, mate. You just have to do it. Opportunity like that comes along. You can't not do it, can you? You've got to. Uh, no matter what, really. But it's just a shame it isn't strictly just the shed, if you know what I mean, is it? It can't, it can't be just a dirty shed because no TV company is going to allow a third party to film in there. And then particularly with all this COVID stuff, so much as it is, as far as anyone, well, as far as they said, Schedulencia and uh, are concerned, it'll, um, it will just be dirty sheds. It's just a shame, you know, you can't have a more active role, I think. These are to adjust the, the burner. But you see, I wish, when we'd made this, I wish that had gone in there straight down. It would have created a hot spot nicely in the middle because this always tends to heat up on one side. So just for anyone else out there who's contemplating making one of these, then just, you know, that would just be a little, a little thing to think about where your burner's kind of positioned because we create a hot spot on one side and it's fine. But this, this, this isn't an ideal forge. It works really well. It was as cheap as hell to make. I can't really see how, if you can fabricate, I can't really see how you would ever want to buy a forge. There's your thumbnail. That might be it actually. So we're doing this because we're going to make some skull coasters, aren't we? Yep. So we've got uh, we've so, got an order for those in, and we are just right at the end of our uh, ability to make those currently. So we just have to. So we're coming at, to the end of well, the first run, eh? Yeah, the first run, and and decide what we do next. I mean, it might be nice to do something else, maybe. So we just talk a little bit about some other merch that we might have that people might be interested in, like our. Oh, our run of t-shirts. Our t-shirts, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because Al's on TV, say it again, Al. Oh, because I'm on TV now. Yeah. I'm a big fat star. <laughs> we made some uh, 
T-shirts. Shedulicious. Who was it that came up with that? Shedulicious it... is actually Ivan Walker. Ivan Walker. Yeah, that's bloody brilliant, that one. We really enjoyed that. And yeah. we've made it into a T-shirt, actually. So um, thanks for that, Ivan. We really appreciate your help. Yeah. So essentially, we mark out the T. Just gives us an idea. Hey! What was that? Uh, nothing. It was a... What? I don't know. I'm not playing today. You're not playing? Uh, I'm busy. I'm busy. Is that it? No, two dropped. <laughs> Double dropped. Double dropped. <laughs> God, gone are those days. Uh, okay, so we've got... We've got those. We've marked up our teeth. We need to do the cut, but we're not going to do that right now because we are going to dress this. We're going to dress our little steak anvil. You're going to do what? Dress our steak anvil. I just want to have a go with this, basically. It's quite a nice little, nice piece of kit. I think it is handmade. And you know, these edges are really nice and sharp and crisp. Uh, you know, you could argue that's a chip, but it doesn't really seem to fall. So yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this because we're gonna try and polish it up. The reason we're gonna polish it up is we're gonna go for a really nice, oh look, you see, it does have a mark on it, look. There's a big K on it there, can you see that? That's super close. There we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So somebody has marked it, but I do think this is probably handmade. I think it's probably made when the days when... Well, I mean, it's got to be made with a power hammer, just judging by the kind of setup. Now, we have categorically told everyone that it shouldn't go into a swage block. At that point there, if you beat around on it, essentially it's going to crack your swage block because this is a wedge. But that taper does fit with loads of space around it in there. Now for us, that's a better working height than me clamping it in my vise, which isn't attached to the table or anything at this point. So we're just going to do a quick sand of those faces just to kind of bring them back. So. Something to work on. this. Is it texturing? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh. 
Good job, I run this shop. Okay guys, yeah. So essentially, so we cut out the teeth, you've seen us doing the grinding, a little bit of freehand grinding, put a little bit of like, um, a little bit of kind of detail into those teeth. In fact, I'm really pleased with the way these ones have come out. Um, it's almost like, because this is the first set of these that has been made in this workshop. Yeah, we've actually only got two more sets. I don't even think I've got a set myself. So yeah, I'm pleased with those, pleased with those teeth. Look good. We needed to personalise these for Phil. He's another middle initial G. Is he? Yeah. Oh, is he? I thought he was, thought PGC. He was a Genghis. PGC. Did yeah. you ask him? I did ask him. But he said it was for Godly. Godly? Yeah. Ah. Phil Godly, cook. A religious man, no doubt. <laughs> oh, wow. He's done it, though. I didn't like that jump, did you? That's an accident waiting to freaking happen. Nine. Nine, nine. Twenty. I think this year, oh, more than, more than, more than ever, it's nice to put that on with it being the, the year of the... Year of Covid. <laughs> That'll be the G because it'll be so you no, though that's the A. Guess who likes stamping his own name on stuff? W. <laughs> Third time lucky. P P G P G C E. We'll probably put that on another one as well. Just in the wire brush. P G C E. So This was always my favourite hammer for doing this.
Success, Alistair G. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, nice set this. Happy with them. Right, those, the colour on those is amazing, isn't it? And they're all lacquered. Oh, so when you're a big TV star, Al, these will be gold dust, wouldn't they, Al? Well, yeah, I suppose, yeah, actually, in a way. Big TV star. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you, are you calling me fat? <laughs> you're the biggest TV star. No, that's Robbie Coltrane. Ah. No, 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 that was Bruce Wayne. So, the stay cam, Bill. Because it's nice and flat, I'm actually just using it to flatten these out. So, it is nice that it's got a use. Okay, last one for the quench. Go. I'm just taking the heat off because I want to leave some hidden heat in it so all of that water evaporates. Because things that come straight out of the forge often have a tendency to rust exceptionally quickly. So there we go, there we go. That's the third portion of today's beautiful Filming operation. <laughs> I enjoyed using that. Yeah. More because it's so flat. So what I was doing when I was using that, I was hitting it on the reverse, so not the detail side, I was hitting it on the reverse, just to kind of flatten them off again. And once now these are kind of ready, we'll have a proper look. So really what we'd, nice and warm. Honestly, is we want to see that sitting without too much flappy, flappy, bang, bang. So I think what we'll do, or just very delicately, just because the, the felt obviously takes out a little bit of that as well. It's quite a nice colour on that one, isn't it? Yeah, that's gone mental. Yeah, I think that's because the, um, because it was wet after the quench, it's just started that first phase of rusting, which comes across as that beautiful temper colour orange, if you know what I mean. It's like that one, that one looks amazing. Look at all the colours in there. Come up beautifully, that one, actually. Unfortunately, just need to put a bit more detail, I think. No. So what's this you spraying on? I haven't seen this before. This is the matte lacquer. Ugh. Okay. So, I think in 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 a, in a way, it's like uh, today we did one. We did. We were going to make something else, weren't we? And then basically, this order came in last night, and we just thought, well, let's let's stick in the vein of the kind of films we're making at the moment and you know just just go into the workshop and actually just do the jobs we've got to do today so we do have one little more little job that i'd like to do so i'll get rid of old stumpy the anvil I'm you happy with that i'm enjoying that i when don't you like... said it was jumping that you yes. didn't like yes because it's sat in a swage block it needs to be set in its own what i'd really like is a, a stump to about here and have that sat here so you kind of like you know so you're going to be double anviling in here? Well, no. It, well, yes, in a way. But this is, you know, that is so flat. Yeah. And it's perfect for flattening off those uh, skull coasters. The edges are so crisp. So I think that's something that once we start using, we're just going to use more and more. The other thing is if we take the forge somewhere or we do do some, you know, not this year, let's face it. But if we did a show at some point, you know, suddenly we've got the ability to actually take an anvil with us rather than dragging that bloody great lump around. So... There he um, is. Who? Where is? The anvil. Oh yeah, there it is. I thought you said there's someone at the door. Wasn't it? So we're going to do this little pewter mug now. I'm just going to kind of take this. Get that rust off there. Woo! Okay. 
Okay. I kind of get excited when I use the sander, as you well know, Mark. Right, okay. So why I've used the sander on that is essentially it's not as aggressive as a flat disc. So a flat disc would have would have done probably the same job, but it would have just been a little bit more aggressive. But why these are nice polished, obviously, is my anvil top. It's really flat in this direction here, but across here there is a slight bow. And you learn to you learn to work with your tools. But for me, you can see as I pull my nail across there, you can see all the pits. So every time I hit from above with the hammer, the anvil's hitting back underneath and it's putting those marks in all our what my work, say, or you know, everything that we do at DSC. So when you've got a nice polished surface and you whack it from above with a polished hammer, you're not getting that imperfection. So you're not transferring hammer marks into whatever work you're doing. So that's, that's essentially why. So I mean, this is, you know, thankfully this silversmith, he'd already done most of the hard work. So I will just be a second. Hopefully one of our subscribers is gonna be a pewter specialist, but there we go. Quite a unique one this, isn't it? I really like the shape of it and I've never seen one before. With a handle. With the, with the, you know, with that kind of style, it looks like a completely modern, which I imagine means it's probably reasonably old. This, this company has been going since like 17 something or other. So I actually think from the research I've done that this is actually Regency period. So, and what is it? Is it a quart? I think it's a quart. Yeah, it says quart there. You can just make it out where it's really yeah, faded. Mm -hmm. But it was a giveaway price. You were there when we bought it, the antiques place. Oh yeah. And I'm just like, I think it's a lot older than we imagine. So what are you doing to it then? Well, I just wanted to. Can you see here where this handle's just been kind of knocked in a little bit? So I wanted to very delicately just kind of try and just kind of try and knock it kind of back into shape a little bit. I'm not entirely sure we're getting what I really want there, so I'm just gonna spin that round. Use that tighter thing, it seems to sit better there. Soft nice mallet for a hard-faced guy. So just kind of, I don't know, I'm not gonna go overly, I'm not gonna go overly crazy with this. I don't wanna damage it. Well, that's better than it was. Oh, oh dropsy! Doosh! There he is. Oh, we split it. Right. Well, there we go. So that's kind of just pumped, punched that out, hasn't it? And we haven't ruined the patina. Not perfectly round, but that's not the idea here. The idea is to just take any discrepancies out. Without leaving any evidence we were here. Kind of, I mean, could almost, could almost do that like. So there we go. So we've just knocked that out nice and gently. I really like the shape of that one. You can imagine what's his name? Bill Sykes. <laughs> Oliver Twist in it or something. <laughs> Better not do stuff like that. Why not? Well, one day I might actually be in fing Oliver Twist, okay? <laughs> if they remake the film. That's why. Yeah? So, and they're like, oh, you took the piss out of Oliver Twist once, didn't you, you fat bastard? Now you can't be in it. Now you're not this great big Steve TV star. <laughs> Oliver Twist is a musical? Oh, f musicals, I hate them. <laughs> Anyway, there we go. Look, we've used the silversmithing stuff um, <laughs> very basically, haven't we? But, you know, 
There you go. Silly little job. We've all got pewter tankards. Have we? Well, people have got pewter. Pew, <laughs> some people, very few people have got pewter <laughs> tankards. But we've just managed to kind of, I don't know, I suppose it was a nothingy job, wasn't it? It was a nothingy job. The Forge really is already dictating to us that it's the next project. And I think really it's going to be probably quite an involved process because essentially what we're going to probably do this next time is have what they call a forced air propane forge. So essentially we'll have it hooked up to the compressor. So the compressor will feed in air and that will burn, that will burn the propane with a more efficient flame. It will give us that ability to crank the pressure up without just burning gas essentially. So we'll, we'll look into that, but that is going to be a more involved kind of situation. I mean, this is something that I've been working on here. Um, so we have Fire Forge to thank for this. P-H-Y-R-E, yeah, P-H-Y-R-E Forge. Uh, and it's a gentleman called Peter Brassafenix. Brassafenix, I think it's a, a Dutch name, but he's an American gentleman. Um, and he does incredible things with what they call um, a style of joinery called joinery blacksmithing. So it's kind of punching and drifting holes. We've made a little kind of, um, we've made some tooling for that here. Um, and it's something I've wanted to do for ages, ever since seeing Peter's, um, Peter's kind of, um, is make a joinered hammer rack. So we've got it where it's wedged and kind of counter, um, uh, what, like rebated and then it all fits together. So this is all made with by punching and drifting square holes and then wedging tight. So, um, and it just produces this look which I absolutely love. And you don't see because it's really time consuming to do. Everything on that is hand fitted, um, file fitted. And I mean, look at that. It's just absolutely bomb proof, he says as he rips it off the wall. <laughs> And what about what else we found at the second hand shop? Uh, oh yeah, now, okay guys, yeah. Um, so, again, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because we'll familiarize you with this at the time. This is a 1920s motorcycle carbide or acetylene lamp. The plan with this is one of our classic, um, one of our classic lamp builds. So we're gonna have an oak block, we're gonna forge a load of detail, probably a yoke for this to sit into. We're gonna get a bulb in here, all the kind of usual stuff. So many people are taking things, sticking a bulb out of the top of it. Oh, I've made a lamp, an upcycled lamp. And you know what? 90% of them are pure shite. And I, I, I'm saying that, you know, as someone who kind of used to think that they were quite good. We wanna be more authentic than that. So, um, so what have you done? Uh, essentially, I've just taken it to pieces, I've cleaned the glass, we've got a big, an old mirror at the back there that someone's siliconed back together, which is a bit of a shame really. And the funny thing is, so this was sold to us as a, as a 1920s lamp, and when, we, when I actually got in there and took it to pieces, there were these old, look at this, FBI, so I think this is Federation of Business Investors, and look, July, July 9th, 1924. Uh, look, there was all of these, I presume, to stop that mirror rattling around in the back. Mm. So all of those, what's it says here? Great Western Railways Enterprises. Ah, Federation of British Industries, sorry. The original FBI. So it's going to be, uh, what do you call it? Um... Well, it will be an upcycled lamp, but we're going to try and do it and we're going to try and shame some people. Not that I'm naming names, I, I wouldn't know anyone that does that kind of crap because you just see them in all these bloody old antique shops and they just, they take like a... So, you know, they take one of these, they take like a, a bit and brace, for example, like that. And, you know, they f stick it on a pine block and they put a light bulb out of here and it's like... Eee! And it's like, yeah, it's still a shitty old tool. So we'll try and do it with a bit more, a little bit more care. We don't really want to alter that lamp. We want that lamp to stay as it is. We won't, don't want to destroy it in the process. Um, God, I could tell you a story right now and it'll make so much sense, but I can't because we're not allowed to, just in terms of one of the projects I've got on with this filming. Oh, um, we're talking about the TV again, are we, Al? Yeah? Yeah. It's all I'm talking about now, Mark. And if you don't like it, well, get out. <laughs> we, you should just cut there. So thank you all. And, you know, stick with us. Catch you on the next one. Or maybe I won't because I'll be too big because I'm a TV star now.
Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.